well after a really exciting MX2 qualifying race. We're back down on the start line for the MX1, guys. Uh, we're going to have a word with Kevin Schreibos. It's been full gas for you recently. You went straight to the US after Brazil and rode a couple of the nationals out there. How was the experience? It was quite good, you know. I had a lot of fun, so uh, I, was just, I was just so happy to be there and to, uh, yeah, just to be a part of it, a part of those uh, two races. And it's something completely different, but I liked it a lot, so. And the format's pretty different. Yeah, sure, you know, uh, because we have two times short uh, practices of 15 minutes and then two heats of 30 minutes, so everything is quite quick. And here is like a long time, you know, like two days. But uh, in the end, it, uh, I like this one, but also the other one. So. The GP calendar from here on in is pretty full on. Did you have any worries or concerns that might affect your energy levels or anything like that for the rest of the GPs? No, not really, you know, uh, because I think I'm in quite a good shape. So I think after Italy, we have one weekend off and then it's 11 weekends uh, full gas. But uh, I'm definitely looking forward to that. And you're coming off the back of a fantastic podium in Brazil. Yeah, sure. You know, I was, I was really happy there and uh, I hope I can do it again here best of luck this weekend we're going to move on up and we also oh and i won't trip up uh we're going to see if we can have a word with max nagel max you had a great qualifying race in brazil the last time we were out and you just missed out on that podium how did you come away feeling from that oh it was still good i mean like you said just missed the podium with same points but uh, fourth place was and this time was nice for me it was my best result for this year uh, we, had, um, we had some good training the last two weeks, so maybe it would be nice to make the podium now in France finally. Uh, you never know what happened in the race, but uh, I will try hard. And the last time we were here, I think it was in 2009, you did a pretty good job, double moto win. Is this track you like? Yes, but in this time it was uh, raining a lot on Saturday, so the track was completely different uh, track conditions than now. Now it's pretty hard and dry. But um, and really fast, like everybody's going almost same speed, but it's okay, I, I like it. Okay, we'll have fun out there today. Thank you. And we're going to see the MX1 qualifying race. Well, Tony Cairoli was just under half a second faster than Gauthier Paul Anne in the pre qualifying session. And those two really are the, the men in form at the moment. Cairoli for the obvious reasons, but Gauthier Paul Anne would love to get a result here this weekend. Well, the gate eventually dropped and it was Antonio Cairoli on the Red Bull KTM who swept through turn one at the head of the field in front of a massive crowd here at, at uh, Erne. And Cairoli already set about destroying the opposition in the early stages, was more than seven or eight seconds clear of Xavier Borg, who on the Ice One Racing KTM was making his return back to Grand Prix after an injury earlier on in the season. Kenny Bobrashev on the Honda World Motocross Machine started in third ahead of Jeremy Van Horbeek and Rui Gonsalves. as Kenda Dijker made a good start in fifth place. But this was a battle for second. That would go on just for a couple of laps between Xavier Borg and uh, Jeremy Van Horbeek. But Mattis Caro, he went down, not for the first time. And Caro would eventually come home well down the order in 23rd position. But Van Horbeek, once he got into second position, just set about. Keeping it upright on two wheels. And that would be a good qualifying position for the number 89 factory Kawasaki rider. Xavier Borg, though, urged on by the massive crowd here. Didn't want to disappoint, nor too did Evgeny Bobrashev, but he was being closed in by Kenda Dijka, number nine on the second of the Red Bull KTMs. Rugon Salves and Avide Guarneri were having a good ride. So too was Tommy Searle and Gauthier Paul Land, who made a bad start and was having to fight hard. Joel Rulantz had a big crash on the same downhill section that caught out Jeffrey Hurlings in MX2. But he would eventually pick himself up, but would only come home in 26. But closing stages, Tommy Searle was all over the back of Clement de Salle on the Rockstar Energy Suzuki. And Tommy Searle would eventually go through and finish in seventh place. De Salle would drop to ninth. So Searle finding a way past Rue Gonsalves in the closing stages of the race. The flag went out, and it was Kai Rowley who was the winner in the heat. Tony, somebody was saying to me earlier that you make a good start here and it's half the job done. Did you find that to be the case? For sure. I think uh, the start is uh, very much important on this, uh, on this race because the track is... Uh, very small and uh, not easy to pass and uh, you can see it from the speed over the everybody is really close and uh, also the other guys uh, the top guys uh, if they start not so good they cannot come through the pack very easy as a 
as they do in the other tracks. So the start's uh, the key for sure for the tomorrow's race. Well done.